How to apply payment to invoice in QuickBooks. Hey there, everyone. This is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. I'm going to show you how to apply a payment to an invoice in QuickBooks. And stick around to the end because I'm going to show you how most people mess this up. And when they mess it up, they inadvertently duplicate their sales in QuickBooks. And it becomes an absolute mess. Okay, so here we are on the home page. And let's take an example. Let's say that you get a check uh, in the mail for a customer and it's for an invoice that you have sent to that customer. It, and it could, be, it could be a credit card payment. It could be a debit card. It could be a money order. It doesn't matter. The process is going to be the same in QuickBooks every single time. Okay, so what you're going to do, you've got you know, the, the flow uh, chart here you can use and you can say receive payments. That's gonna be your simplest way, but you can also go to the customer drop-down menu and say customer receive payments. Okay, it's gonna take you to the exact same spot. Okay, so we're gonna click this here, receive payments. So we come to the screen, the customer payment, and what you're gonna do is choose the drop-down box for the customer that paid you. So we're going to say, let's say Doug Jacobson in his kitchen job sent us a check for $2,320. And again, it could be a credit card, it could be cash, it could be anything. You're gonna record this in the same way. All right, so we're gonna go up here, we're gonna say payment amount 2,320, and we'll put in the date. And I always advise people to enter a check number if this was a check. So we're gonna assume this was 36547. You'll see this check mark here. Now this uh, will automatically populate when it equals that amount. Now, if there were multiple invoices, and let's say they, you know, let's say they owed a total of 10,000, they paid five, you can type in five and then check off which invoices to apply it to, and it'll clear that out. So if it's like the earliest invoice going forward, you just check off which ones you want to apply it to, and uh, if the last one you check off still has an amount due. QuickBooks will automatically calculate that for you. So you see down here in the bottom right hand corner, amounts for selected invoices, amount due 2320, applied 2320. So at this point, if this is the only check and customer payments that you receive that day, you're going to save and close. Okay. So it's very simple. So when a customer sends you a payment, whatever form it's in, you're going to receive payments right here on the home screen, and you are going to choose the customer and apply that payment to their open invoices. Now, here's where a lot of people mess up. Okay, they will go in, they'll create an invoice, and let's say that Doug Jacobson sent us a check for that $2,320 they're going to basically go to banking, make deposits, and they're gonna take that to the bank. Let me cancel this. They're gonna take it and they will just type in Doug Jacobson from account. Uh, let's say they'll just show it as income. Let's say construction design income, check number. I won't put that in, payment method check and 2,320. Let me type that in here. All right, so they'll go and they'll make this deposit at the bank and they will say that they just recorded this deposit. So if they hit save and close. Now what happens is QuickBooks has now duplicated those sales. And that is because when you create that invoice, you're gonna have this invoice out there that says Doug Jacobson still owes you $2,320 and you made the deposit for $2,320 and put it to revenue. So you essentially have duplicated your revenue. And you're still gonna show that Doug J Jacobson owes you $2,320. So you have to make that connection in QuickBooks. You have to apply it to the specific invoice that you created. Otherwise, you will duplicate sales and you will mess up your books because you're gonna think that your profit and loss is great because you've duplicated all these sales, when in reality, they should be cut in half. All right, any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below and I'll see you in the next video.